Hi there, welcome to the Schwelven's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. My first project is using this thrifted bread box. I've sanded it down, and I'm going to give it a coat of clear matte sealer to block out any of the stains. Then I'm gonna take it outside and using my flat white spray paint, I'm gonna give it a couple of good thin coats. You wanna make sure that you don't put it on too heavily because then it'll end up dripping. I'm also using my favorite spray paint trigger from Krylon. I do have it listed down in the description box. I've also got it on a piece of cardboard so I can easily just spin it around while I'm painting. These are some spindle feet that I cut down from a bed that I picked up off the side of the road. Lucky me, I was so excited when I found it. I'm going to just drill some holes right into the center of each of the little spindle legs because I need somewhere for the screw to go when I attach it to the bread box. Here I'm trying to figure out where I want to put the legs. Ideally, I would want them in the corners, but at the top here, there isn't an extra piece of wood. So I decided that putting them on the inside would be too close together. I'm gonna go get a piece of painter stick and another little piece of wood and see if I can match the thickness of the bottom piece. I'm going to use my favorite weld bond glue to attach both of these wood pieces to the bottom of the bread box. Weld bond glue is a permanent hold and it sticks to anything. So you can glue wood, metal, plastic, glass, ceramic, anything, it'll work. That's why I love it because I only need one glue for all of those different materials. Now that the glue has set up enough for me to be able to work, I'm going to use my drill and drill a hole at the bottom of the bread box in each of the four corners where I want the legs to be. When I'm doing projects like this, I usually wing it, which means that I don't measure where I need the holes to go. I just eyeball it. But if you need to measure, go right ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. I just am a little bit lazy when it comes to stuff like that. So I just wanna get the job done. I made sure to make the drill holes big enough that I could just slide the screw through from the inside. Then I'm going to use a screwdriver to hold it in place and then take the leg and just screw that in. And it turns out super tight and secure. I'm just going to repeat the process for the other three legs. I created some cute little decals using my Cricut Joy and I'm gonna put them on the bread box. So this bottom one has a spade and a rake, I guess you would call them. I can't remember the name of the small ones. And just the words garden tools. Again, as usual, I will have these listed on my website as free printables for you. So just go down to my description box and click on the link free printables. I don't usually show you the process of how I take the transfer tape off and work with these decals, but I thought I would show you today just because the letters were giving me a little bit of an issue and I wanted to just show you how I take care of that. So sometimes it'll start to peel up and for example, the shovel right away was peeling up. So I just use the soft end or the rounded end of my Cricut tool here, the weeder, and just burnish it down a little bit more. And that just helps to make sure that the letters will stick properly. Another tip I have for you is if it's not coming off when you're pulling the transfer tape off in one direction, try switching the direction. So here it was still giving me issues. So I just started going from the bottom instead of the side. And then I ended up having to use my little weeding tool to actually pick it off the transfer tape and stick it down. That capital G just did not want to get off that transfer tape. I love how this bread box turned garden toolbox turned out. It was a special request from my mom who lives in an apartment and didn't have anywhere to store her garden tools on her balcony. So I created this little thing for her and she loves it just as much as I do. And I hope you guys love it too.
Today's video is in collaboration with Buffy from Buffy's Designs. We're bringing you the Summer Lovin' Garden and Porch Decor collab. If you've not seen Buffy's channel, please go over and take a look. She's a young channel just starting out, but does some amazing thrift flips and home decor. You are sure to be inspired by what she's been creating. I'd love it if you could hit that red subscribe button and the like button. Make sure you click the bell so you get notified when she uploads new content and help her channel grow. The second project I have for you today is also a bread box, but it's huge. I'll show you that in a few minutes. I'm just taking these table legs that were given to me by a friend. The top of the table was in really bad shape, so she didn't even give me the top. She just gave me these legs. They're a really red mahogany color, and I don't like that, and they're very shiny. So I decided to take my sanding sponge and go over them really well with the sandpaper just to get rid of the shine and also take off some of that red stain. I'm going to give the table legs one good coat of Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one in flat black. And I thought that would just be a really nice accent against the white of the bread box. I didn't bring my turntable outside with me, but the cardboard seems to be working really well too. And this way I can actually just pick it up and set it aside while it's drying. I know I said earlier that I don't normally plan things out, but in this case, it's a little different. These legs have a really peculiar shape and I did want to make sure that I had them all facing the right direction. So I'm just taking a pencil and tracing out where I want them to be. Now I am still eyeballing the position of them, but the pencil line will help me to drill right in the center. I'm also doing the same thing here. I'm using a drill bit that is a little bit larger than the size of the screw, so I can easily just push it through from the inside of the bread box. Here you can see that I've pushed the screw through. I'm holding it again on the inside with a screwdriver, and then I'm just going to screw the table leg all the way on until it is really snug and secure. Here's what this monster of a bread box looks like. It's almost two feet wide, so I'm not even sure it was a bread box, but it did have a lid. I chose to take the lid off for this project, and now I'm just going to go around the edges with my sandpaper, sand it off, and make it look nice and distressed. This was something that was part of my mammoth painting spree that I did a couple of months ago in my garage where I took all of my wood pieces, I painted them black with spray paint first, then I did a coat of clear coat on top to prevent any stains from coming through, and then I did a couple of coats of just regular latex white paint. I'm back inside again and for this project I decided to create a tissue paper printable. If you're interested in learning how to do tissue paper printables, I will have a link down in my description box to my Sandra's Tech Spot channel where I have a full tutorial on how to do tissue paper printing. I'm just applying a thin coat of Mod Podge where I want my first transfer to go and I've cut it out really close to the design and I'm going to center it as best I can because once I get it down I'm not going to be able to peel it up again. Always make sure that you have some Mod Podge on your brush. If your brush is too dry, you'll end up tearing the tissue paper. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you like farmhouse decor, thrift flips, dollar store DIYs, and some wood decor. I'd love for you to stick around hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free and it really helps my channel grow. This is the actual free printable. As I said earlier, I did print out two of them and I cut apart some of the herbs so I could add them onto the box. Because it's such a large surface, I thought it would look much better with the addition of a few herbs on either side. Here I'm just adding a little bit more Mod Podge to cover the front of the box completely. I will be sealing it 
with a spray sealer but sometimes the mod podge is a little bit of a different finish even though they're both matte they're two different products so i like to just make things look cohesive this box looks absolutely amazing on my front porch i am in love I'd like to thank Buffy for including me in this collaboration. It was a lot of fun. Please make sure you hit that thumbs up button. That tells YouTube that you like my video and they promote me more, which helps my channel grow too. Thank you so much for watching and staying right to the end. I really appreciate all of your support. If you'd like to see more of my videos, I've got a couple of them listed for you right here. See you in the next one.